Hey there, in this video, we will be talking about stationary points, maxima, minima, and this is part of the bigger topic on differentiation. The question goes, a piece of wire with fixed length LCM is bent to form the shape of a sector OPQ with center O, radius RCM, as shown in the diagram. The angle at the center is theta radians. So in part A, show that the area ACM square of the sector is given to be A equals to half RL minus away R squared. And that is a two marks question. And in B part one, given that R can vary, A has a stationary value, find R in terms of L, as well as its corresponding value of theta. And that is a three marks question. And in B part two, determine the nature of this stationary value. And that is a one marks question. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try. And when you're ready, keep watching. Now let us begin this question. First thing, the question wants us to find the area of the sector. So now let us revise the area of sector formula. So by area of sector formula, we are referring to area of sector A equals to half R squared, where R is the variable used in the question as radius and theta is the variable used as the angle form. So once we have the area of sector A, we might also want to find out the formula for arc length PQ. Since after all, we need to use a wire of fixed length LCM to form the parameter of this entire thing. So by arc length formula, I'm referring to S equals to R theta, where S refers to the arc length PQ, R refers to the radius and theta once again refers to the angle. So with these two formulas in play, we can then start to do up our question. So first thing, we might want to notice that in the proving equation here, we have a half RL minus away R squared theta. Whereas in our formula, we have a half R squared theta. That means to say, in one way or another, we need to get rid of this theta. So what do I mean by that? So now let us take a look at our A part one solution. So L, is known as fixed length. And L is formed by having R theta, which is the arc length, R theta, as well as the two times of radius like this. So this is my L. And L is a fixed length, it's fixed. Only R and theta can change. L is actually fixed. With that, we have this formula. So how do we make this, how do we have this formula? Basically, remember I talked about it just now, whereby theta is appearing in our formula, but it's not appearing in our in our proving sentence or equation here. So that means to say we could swap theta out by making theta the subject. So by making theta the subject, in this case, I divide by r throughout, divide by r two throughout. So I have a l over theta, l over r in the left hand side, minus away two to make theta the subject. So once we have theta to be l over r minus two, we sub this equation into the area of sector formula like this. So replacing the yellow part, the yellow theta in this case, with L over R minus two, we have this. So replacing the theta to be L over R minus two we found earlier, we have this part. Now in this question, this is exactly what they want us to be doing, whereby this equation, we have a variable of A, we have the variable of R, and we have a constant of L in this case. So we have successfully got rid of what we do not want, the theta. After which we simplify this by doing a simple expansion. So basically half R squared multiplied by L over R, the half will remain, the L will remain, R squared divided by R in this case will therefore give us the R. Half R squared multiplied by a negative two shall give us a negative r squared. And that's it. We have managed to prove this first equation. Now let us go on to part B of the questions. In part B, the question actually asks about stationary values and we are asked to determine the nature of this stationary value. 
by that we might want to revise on our second derivative test like this in order to de determine the nature so first thing we have if our first order de derivative is equal to zero and our second derivative is less than zero we consider this nature as a maximum point so why is the first order derivative a zero because this is necessary in order to find the stationary value so our first derivative must always be equal to zero first and then we can use this first derivative to differentiate further to get a second order derivative and if this second order derivative is actually lesser than zero or negative we consider this nature to be a maximum now if this second order derivative is actually greater than zero we consider this nature to be a minimum point now what happens if both the first order and second order derivative is actually equal to zero like this over here so the first order and the second order is actually equal to zero we do not draw any conclusion in fact we have to go back to our first order derivative test to determine the nature of this so with that in mind we can then start to do our part b question so in part b we first have to set our dA over dr to be equal to zero because why in this case we have our a equation consisting of r and l let's not forget that let's not forget that l is a fixed length so l is not a variable l needs to be treated as a constant the only two variables in this equation is a and r so that's the only two variables in this equation a and r so to take the first order derivative, derivative test in this case will mean that we need to do a da over dr and da over dr like this we set it to be equal to zero because that is the meaning of stationary value so da over dr to be equal to zero and we do a differentiation so when we differentiate da over dr so differentiate half rl now the half and l needs to be treated like a constant differentiate r will be a once so differentiate half rl will actually give us a half l differentiate negative r squared and bring down power power minus one shall give us a negative two r equals to zero so this is our da over dr and setting da over dr to be equal to zero the question also goes on to say that we are to express r in terms of l so expressing r in terms of l in this case making r the subject we should be having this equation so making r the subject r will therefore be equals to a one quarter l so the next part of this b part one requires us to determine the corresponding value of theta the angle so in this case we can use r equals to one quarter l we can choose to sub into l or a but the thing about this is that if we decide to sub l the r equals to a quarter l into a in this case we we'll end up be having way too many unknowns because imagine if we change the r into one quarter l we have an equation consisting of a r is now changed to l and the theta so this equation will have a total of three unknowns and it'll be quite hard to solve if instead we sub r equals to one quarter l into this part so replacing r to be a one quarter l like this we will end up be having this part here now as you can see here we can divide by l throughout this entire equation because l cannot be a zero fixed length l it has got to be more than zero it cannot be a zero so we can divide by l throughout like this so dividing by l throughout like this so we should be having let me shift this thing up so we should be having this equation so dividing by l on the left we have one dividing by l on the right in this case the first term will have a one quarter theta the second term dividing by l throughout will therefore give us a half solving for theta will therefore give us two and that is the corresponding value of theta this two refers to a radian of two in this case and in b part two you are required to determine the nature of this stationary value so to de determine the nature we have to do a second order derivative test in this case so a second derivative test to determine whether is it less than zero more than zero or equals to zero so over here 
as we can see that this is our first order derivative. To do a second order derivative, we need to differentiate this. Let's not forget that half L, the L is a constant. It is not a variable. So d2a over dr squared. All right, d2a over dr squared. If we do a differentiation for this, differentiate half L is actually a zero because differentiating constant is a zero. Differentiating a negative 2r shall give us a negative 2. So the second order derivative test gives us a result of negative 2. And this answer is actually less than 0. As a result, we can do a conclusion based on this. If d2a dr squared is less than 0, we consider it to be the nature of a maximum point. And that's the answer for this question.